And the last talk of this session is by Valentin Mlot about a direct computational interpretation of second order arithmetic via abduct recursion. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, so, yes, uh, so I will talk about uh, recent work uh, that uh, is, well, uh, as written, uh, a computational interpretation of second order arithmetic uh, via update recursion. Um, so, first of all, why bother about second order arithmetic? Actually, from a mathematical point of view, it's a very interesting theory because uh, it's, uh, so it's uh, much stronger than first order arithmetic. You can uh, formalize many things and encode many structures using second order quantifications. Uh, yet, it's not as powerful as uh, full ZF set theory. Uh, but but uh, we usually say that most of what we call usual mathematics uh, can be formalized entirely in second order arithmetic. So uh, that's, I think, quite an interesting uh, theory to, to, to study. Um, so, uh, and, and an another thing that makes, makes it very uh, particularly interesting is uh, that it's at the heart of the reverse mathematics programs, uh, program. Uh, so uh, the idea of reverse mathematics is that uh, you will um, study subsystems of second order arithmetics. Uh, so these subsystems are obtained by restricting the kind of uh, re comprehension scheme that you allow and uh, you have very interesting results uh, and you try to find the, the least powerful uh, system uh, possible for each theorem. Um, so, first a bit of uh, history about uh, computational interpretation. So, uh, the, the first uh, computational interpretations were for first order arithmetic. So, there were uh, Gödel's uh, dialectica interpretation uh, in uh, the beginning of the 40s, published much, much later. Um, then came Clini's number realizability. Uh, which is uh, kind of taking only uh, one part of dialectica and putting this into the whole world of, uh, of uh, recursive functions. And then Kreisel's modified realizability, uh, where instead of taking all recursive functions, you only take uh, 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 functions which are well typed in some system. <coughs> and then concerning second order arithmetic, uh, first, you had uh, spectors by recursion, which uh, interprets uh, the comprehension scheme. Then Girard's system F, polymorphic lambda calculus, uh, as, uh, as um, called by Reynolds. Uh, then on this, Krivin built his uh, classical realizability models. And uh, more recently, uh, there has been uh, new versions of spectors by recursion by uh, first Berardi, Bezem, Cocon, and uh, then by uh, Berger and others, actually. I can't cite uh, everyone, of course. Um, so what is interesting is, is that we can uh, differentiate uh, between two, uh, two families of interpretations of secondary arithmetic. So you have the bar, recursive, the bar recursive ones, which are the green ones, and the polymorphic ones, which are the red ones. And so uh, the thing is that, um, so yeah, so that's uh, what's here. You have polymorphic and bar recursive interpretations of secondary arithmetic. Uh, so these two techniques interpret the same theory, second order arithmetic, but they are computationally very different, and we don't really know what relates them. So that's the, the question I, uh, I'm trying to, to tackle. Uh, so let's have a quick look at what is uh, polymorphism, what is bar recursion. Uh, so polymorphism, most of you are familiar with it, uh, so you can uh, write programs which types uh, can be universally quantified. So typically uh, you have the, the type of um, lists on some, uh, on some type alpha, and then uh, if you write the function map, that maps a function from alpha to beta to a function from list alpha to list beta by applying it to every element in the list, then you can see that the code of the function doesn't depend on, on alpha and beta. And so, in fact, you can give a uh, map uh, this polymorphic type uh, that you see here. But you, you can do very wild things using uh, polymorphism. So, as an example, uh, if you have some, uh, some 
element which has the type of the identity, then you can instantiate uh, this with the, the type of the identity itself and then apply your element to itself, which is very weird. So of course you can uh, you you can't then um, uh, put a lambda, lambda and apply it to itself because you would get non termination. But still, applying something to itself is weird. Uh, logically, uh, these uh, polymorph polymorphic types uh, correspond to uh, quantification on propositions. So uh, if you look at the the interpretation of second order arithmetic in System F, it's really uh, type instantiation exactly corresponds to instantiation of uh, uh, universal quantification on propositions uh, or on sets of natural numbers. That's uh, really the, the idea. Then now about uh, bar recursion. So uh, in bar recursion you don't have polymorphic types. Everything is simple typed. Uh, but you have a new form of recursion which is a recursion on well-founded trees, but uh, the well-founded, uh, the well-foundedness of these trees is uh, not something that comes from a kind of inductive structures. It's uh, just a, a property at the meta level that comes from uh, mainly continuity of uh, programs. Uh, for termination of, of this new form of recursion, because you still have a, a normalizing uh, prime language, uh, termination can be proved by various uh, techniques, uh, Zorn's lemma, dependent choice, bar inductions, or things like this. And logically, bar recursion corresponds to uh, the axiom scheme of comprehension. The idea is being that if you want to build the set of natural numbers that satisfy a given proposition, let's call it B, uh, then how will bar recursion work? It will work by uh, building set step by step uh, this set uh, for each uh, natural number. It will um, make uh, a decision about whether it satisfies B or not, and then answer whether it is in the set uh, or, or not. Uh, but yeah, I can't go more in, into the details. So uh, the big, big picture is like, like this. So you have two systems which are second order arithmetic. They are equivalent. They are, these are um, two different presentations though. On one side you have quantification on propositions. On the other side you just add the axiom of uh, comprehension. And, uh, and then you have computational interpretations and between them we have no clue uh, what is their uh, relation. And what I did was uh, trying to, uh, so in, in the path to understanding, uh, understanding the computational correspondence, I thought, well, maybe let's start uh, with the, the same logical system. It will be easier afterwards. So that's what I did. Um, and so just very quickly, what does this model look like? So uh, you, have, um, you have proofs at the beginning. Then these proofs, you interpret them as programs program that contain uh, update recursion, a variant of bar recursion. Uh, and then you have uh, its uh, semantics. So you have uh, a, a semantics in complete partial order, which is uh, quite standard. Then for each complete partial order, you can look at only uh, reducibility candidates, which are uh, uh, the, a subset of the image of uh, terminating programs. And then inside this, you can define realizability values, which carry not only termination, but also correctness uh, with respect to the, to the logic. So that's the, the rough idea of the model. Um, so it looks like this. Uh, you, so first we need to work in classical logic. It's uh, re required in some sense uh, in order for having a uh, bar recursion that works. Um, and, uh, and we interpret the basic types uh, as, uh, as the set of natural numbers for the same reason. And then on the side of formulas, you can observe that, so atomic formulas are uh, interpreted as the set of natural numbers. And uh, on the side of quantifications, so first order quantification is, on, um, is relativized to the set of natural numbers, but uh, second order quantification is completely uniform. So that's uh, what uh, doesn't work. Uh, anyway, there, that's uh, the... Uh, 
Um, and uh, the interpretation of proofs is really straightforward, except for, for the elimination of second order quantification, which involves, of course, update recursion. So I won't have time to go into the details of this. If you want to uh, see the details, uh, there is the extended abstract and uh, there is a full article on my web page, so don't hesitate to, to have a look at it and ask me questions. Uh, and to conclude, so um, uh, for further work, uh, I would like to, to study a bit uh, the, this notion of classical logic, which needs to be, uh, which seems to be needed uh, for update recursion. I'd like to see, uh, in some sense, we, we are in the target of a CPS tra and translation that still needs to be um, found, and so that's one of uh, my my goals. Uh, then, of course, it would be really nice to have an alternative proof of termination for a system F that wouldn't uh, re rely on direct in the impredicativity, but rather on things like Don's lemmas or things like this. And finally, uh, I'd like to uh, study a bit more, yeah, I'm almost done, <laughs> a bit more uh, the, the, the reverse mathematics uh, side of, uh, of, the, of this stuff and, uh, and try to see correspondences between the subsystems of second order arithmetics uh, studied in reverse mathematics and restrictions on the instances of bar recursion or update recursion that are used in uh, the target language. So that's the end of my talk. Thank you. So people are very hungry, so uh, quick questions, please. <laughs> no questions, even better. What do you mean a new termination proof for system F? What do you have in mind exactly? So what I have in mind is that um, in the, the usual uh, termination proof uses reducibility candidates, and in particular, uh, universal, uh, universally quantified types are interpreted as a big intersection on all reducibility candidates. That's where impredicativity lies. And on the other side, when you want to prove termination of bar recursion, it's really not clear where impredicativity comes into play. And, and you use um, variants of the axiom of choice or Zorn's lemmas or, or, or things like this. And I would like to, to study a bit more where does impredicativity lie there. So yeah, that's what I have in mind. One more quick question? No? Okay, so let's uh, thank Renan again. <laughs>